all right gang welcome to another uh short video here what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little look at uh, rearranging or transposing formulas all right now it's a very valuable skill if you're going to be studying engineering uh, particularly as you as you move up the levels um, so we're going to go through a few basics a couple of do's and don'ts and we're going to hit you with some examples that you can uh, start to use during your lessons all right so when we're talking about rearranging we're talking about moving information around in a formula um, to find out unknown variables and that's sort of ties in with the algebra that you've done for years and years at school and it's quite a it's an easy skill to forget if you don't use it so we're mainly going to be moving things around so that we can identify unknown values in, in relation to um, solving engineering problems so first thing one basic rule whatever you do to one side of a formula you've got to do it to the other okay and we'll hit you with some examples here and we'll see how we go so first one we're going to have a little look at is this formula here now the more observant amongst you will remember that this is actually the formula for work done so we've got work done equals force times distance now what i'm going to do i'm going to rearrange this formula so that i can find out what f is all right so i know what work is i know what distance is i'm going to find out what f, what this force is so as you'll remember from your, your algebra lessons these two letters are not connected until we realize that f multiplies s so we need to do the opposite on this side of what it's telling us so that when we move over so we've got a multiply here so we're going to end up with a divide on the other side so what we're going to divide it by we're going to divide it by the letter next to the one we want so the letter what we're going to divide it by is this s so we're going to divide by s okay so we're going to have w divided by s equals f now what we do is when we're doing these algebra calculator uh, formulas we tend to always have the and the value that we're trying to calculate on the left hand side so f equals work divided by distance okay so let's have a look at reverse of that all right so what's this formula what do you think of it that's right it's the modulus of rigidity so we've got g which is modulus of rigidity is equal to shear stress divided by shear strain and as we can see here we've got shear stress divided by shear strain when I move this shear strain to the other side, I want to do the opposite of what it's got on this side. So I'm going to multiply by shear strain, which is a Greek letter gamma. Right. So what's that going to look like? I'm going to have G times gamma equals shear stress. Again, I'll rewrite that. So I'll have shear stress is equal to modulus of rigidity times shear strain all right so we've got two of these basic formulas looked at from slightly different angles and you can see i've got a multiply i do the opposite i divide i've got a divide i do the opposite which is a multiply okay next one formula here for you you probably recognize from year seven so we've got area equals pi r squared and that's for the area of a circle okay now when you get practice to this you realize that you end up doing the same thing again and again so we've got pi times r squared so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to move that pi to the opposite side of the calculation so i've got a multiply so i'm going to divide by pi so i'm going to have a divided by pi equals r squared All right so we need r so let's do the opposite of squaring it, which is finding the square root. So I'm going to square root both sides and that will cancel. So I'm going to have r equals the square root of a divided by pi. Okay, nice and easy. Now, rearranging the formulas probably the trickiest part of any of the questions that you're going to be working through when you're using these so you've really got to pay attention I'm going to get progressively more difficult as we work our way through 
Okay, okay. So, we've got, what's this formula? Where does this belong to? That's right, linear motion. Okay, so V equals U, final velocity equals initial velocity plus AT, acceleration time multiplied by time. So in this case, we want to find out what U is. Now, different to what I did on the previous question, I've got a positive here. Okay, so the formulas are going to get a little bit trickier as we work our way through. So U plus AT. So that really, that section there can be treated as if it's in brackets because we want this U here. So we've got a plus AT. So what's the opposite of plus? Minus. So V minus AT. It's going to V minus AT equals U. So we'll uh, rewrite that. So we'll have u equals v minus a t. It looks a little bit more complicated, but again, those basic commands makes it relatively straightforward. Okay, so same formula, tackle from a different perspective now. I want to know what a is. Okay, so I've got some variables. I need to calculate what a is. All right. Now. V equals U plus AT, U plus. Okay, so I need to get rid of this plus here. So I'm going to take U away from this side. So we're going to minus U. So we'll have V minus U equals AT. Okay, and then that'll cancel there. All right, so I'm wanting A. I've got A times T, the opposite of a times t is divide. So I'm going to divide by t this time. I'm going to divide that by t and that will cancel. And I'll rewrite that. So we'll have a equals v minus u divided by t. So we've got acceleration, final and initial in time. Okay, next one. All right, so we're back on the old equations of linear motion again. All right. Formulas are getting a bit longer, but that doesn't make the rearranging any more difficult. It just means we need to get a little bit more thought. And this is a nice and simple one here. So we're trying to find out what V is. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Find out what V squared is. So we've got a V squared. The opposite of squared is a square root. So we're going to square root this one and that will cancel there. So we'll have V equals U squared plus 2AS and we'll have all of that square rooted. Alright, so that's a little bit of a simple one. Right. Slightly trickier this time, although if you can do the one on the previous page, we can do this one. Same commands as before. So this time I want to calculate what A is. So we've got V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. First thing, I'm going to get rid of this u squared plus. Minus is the opposite. Minus u squared. So I'll have v squared minus u squared equals 2as. And that'll cancel. So I've got my 2 here. I've got my a and I've got my s. So that multiplied by that, multiplied by that. The opposite of multiply is divide, so we're going to divide by 2, we'll divide that one by 2, that'll cancel, so the v squared minus u squared divided by 2 equals a s. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of that s. Again, it's still a multiply, it's going to divide by s, divide by s, and that'll cancel. So I'll rearrange this, rewrite it, sorry, a equals v squared minus u squared divided by 2s. Okay. Next one. All right. Now this may be a, a new one to us at this stage. Um, what we've got here is what's called the continuity of volumetric flow formula, which is about fluids. But just to introduce this to us, so we've got A, which is area, times velocity equals A times velocity. 
All right. And when we're doing fluids, we'll look at this in more depth. But I want to find out what V is, the second V, V2. It's not V squared, not the two V on top. It's V2, so it's the second velocity. So to find what that second velocity is, I'm going to get this A and move on to the other side. So again, A times V, I'm going to do the opposite of that, and I'm going to divide by A. I'm going to divide by A. Okay, and that will cancel. So nice and simple that one. V2, velocity 2, equals area times velocity 1, divided by area 2. Okay. All right. Next one. Again, this may be a new formula, but this is what's called a heat input formula. So this Q represents a volume of heat that gets put into an object, and that is equal to the mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. Don't forget that triangle there means change in. So I'm trying to find specific heat capacity. Now don't get too confused with that terminology at this point. We'll catch that up at a later date. But what I do want to do is move this around so I get C on its own. Again, these are all multiplied. So first thing I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of that M. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiply, which is divide. I'm going to divide Q by M. That'll cancel. I'll just re rewrite this just now. Q divided by M equals delta T times C. Next thing, I'm going to move that delta T to the opposite side. It's a multiply, so again, it then becomes a divide. I'm going to divide by delta T. Oh, that should be a capital. I'll put a capital on at the end. So then that will cancel. So we'll have C equals Q divided by M delta T. So a specific heat capacity equals the quantity of heat divided by the mass times the change in temperature. All right, next one. Probably a, one of the more trickier ones that you'll come across in your mechanical science lessons. And you'll recognize this from your GCSEs. You've got the volume of a sphere formula. Okay. So I want to find out what the radius is. So I know my volume. I've got the rest of my formula. I want to find out what radius this sphere is. Okay, okay. Now, because I've got this fraction, I have to tackle this slightly differently. When you're doing these, you always want to try and get rid of your fractions first. So first thing I'm going to get rid of is this 3. So divide here. So opposite of divide means multiply. So I'm going to have V times 3 equals 4 pi r cubed. Okay, then you'll be asking why V times 3. We'll swap that 3 over, so we'll end up having 3V, but we'll, we'll do that further on near the end. Okay, now for this particular formula, we can treat this 4 pi yeah, we could treat that as if it's in brackets, and then we can move it all at once. So again, it's still a multiply, but it's then going to become a divide. So we're going to divide by 4 pi. So I'm going to divide by 4 pi, and that will cancel. So I'll have r cubed equals, and we'll put the 3v this time, not v3s. We tend to always put the number in front of the letter when we're doing algebra divided by 4 pi. Okay, so I want r on its own. So I've got r cubed. I'm going to do the opposite of cubed. And I'm going to do a, to do a cube root. And that will cancel. So we'll just rewrite this. So we'll have r is equal to the cube root of 3v divided by 4 pi. All right. Okay, now, going back to that simple rule, when you're rearranging or transposing formulas to give it a fancy terminology, I want to do the opposite of what it's telling me. Okay, so if it's telling me to multiply these letters together, I'm going to do the opposite of that and 
is divide. And whatever I do to one side, the simple rule is I must do to the other. Okay, now feel free to go back over these. Have a little look. There's plenty of formulas on your formula sheets, so there's no excuse for you not being able to have enough information to practice. And as always, if you need any help, please let me know. You can drop me an email or you can shout at me in the corridor. And if you need any help, I'll try and help you as much as I possibly can. But let's hope this video is of use to you. And then try and practice, 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 because that's what's going to get you through your exams. And once again, thanks for listening and all the best. Goodbye.